Hello and welcome to Edison TV. My name is Aaron Atkar, I'm a healthcare analyst here at the Edison Group and today we're joined by Dr Stephen Parker, Executive Chairman at Sarium. Sarium is a UK listed drug development company focused on the discovery of novel small molecule kinase inhibitors. Stephen, welcome. Thank you very much, good to be here. So um, Sarium's in-house programs are dual inhibitors of TIC2 and JAK1. Yes. Can you talk to us a bit about the significance of this dual inhibition approach? Yes, uh, perhaps to, to go slightly more broadly than that mm. as well, because if you look at the, the other compounds that are coming up in the field, there are essentially there are, there are two, two groups, and we happen to be in the group which is direct binding to the, to the TIC2 uh, target. Um, there are others which are effectively working as a bystander effect. Um, we believe that but direct binding is, 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 is preferable and, and that's where we are, so we're very pleased to be there. Equally, um, we do have um, some early animal data suggesting that there is a beneficial, um, almost synergistic effect of having both the TIC2 and the JAK1 being hit. Uh, and we, we will say we have some, some early mouse data suggesting that uh, uh, that's an act actively beneficial place to be. So Lead Assets um, 1801 recently presented some positive Phase 1 data. Can you tell us a bit more about this? Yes, we're very excited about the outcome of, of that trial. Uh, we've seen that the, the drug is, the drug was, I should say, the trial was, was uh, conducted in uh, uh, patients, healthy volunteers in Melbourne, Australia. Mm. It was a very substantial trial, both with the single ascending dose and the multiple ascending dose arms, and indeed a food study. Uh, and coming out of it, uh, we've seen no serious adverse events related to drug. Uh, any or the, of the adverse events that we saw, they're all at a mild, moderate nature and typical for any drug trial. Uh, and um, they're equally spread between the drug and the placebo arms. Mm -hmm. So there are no signals that we should be concerned about coming out of that. Uh, equally, we've shown that the half-life of the drug is sufficient, that we are very confident we'll have once-a-day dosing uh, going, going forwards. Fantastic. So, um, Sarium recently completed a £3.4 million equity raise. Indeed. Um, could you tell us a bit more about how this will support the, uh, the cash runway and the pipeline activities? Yes. Uh, firstly, still focusing on 1801. Um, we have decided that we will conduct uh, the uh, toxic, uh, the tox study required prior to going into phase two. Now the, the strategy of the company is to seek uh, licensing partners uh, at late preclinical or, or early clinical and that remains our strategy but uh, this is a study that needs to be done whoever is taking the, the phase two study forwards. Um, and so we, uh, um, we may be doing that for our own benefit direct benefit, mm. we may be doing it uh, as, as part of the package uh, that will form the licensing package uh, going forwards. So, so, so we're going to, to do that. That will probably take, um, in all, that's probably about six months mm -hmm. uh, from planning through study uh, and through data analysis and such like, but uh, it's not a huge length of time. Uh, then in addition to that, we uh, are able, with this money, to, to get 1802, uh, our second compound, uh, moving forwards. Uh, 1802 has, has been selected as being an immune oncology drug, mm. uh, and, uh, and it's very good to have the resources to, to get that moving towards the clinic as well. Excellent. So um, keeping the focus for now on lead assets um, 1801, uh -huh. uh, we understand that for phase two, um, a likely indication could be psoriasis, uh, which can be a bit of a competitive space. So curious to hear a bit more about the potential rationale for this, uh, this indication. Yes, well, you're absolutely right. There's a, there's a lot of activity in, in the space. Um, we, we chose psoriasis when we originally in the phase one study, we thought that we would have a, a very small phase one B bolted on to the end, which was probably not more than six to eight patients, but these would be psoriasis patients as opposed to healthy volunteers. Um, but we are quite open as to the, the target uh, in which the, the, the drug goes to, and indeed I'm sure that uh, there will be multiple autoimmune 
uh, targets that the, the drug will be very appropriate for. Um, at this stage, um, we are not, we're not absolutely just picking a single target. Uh, and we'll see what, 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 comes, what comes out best as we, as we move forwards. Excellent. So I'm um, shifting the focus now to um, other assets, sure. um, 1802 and 737. Yes. Uh, could you tell us a bit more about uh, where these are in the clinical stages of development? Yes, well, um, SRA 737 was the, uh, uh, the, the check one inhibitor, which mm. was co-developed with parts of the of Cancer Research UK organisation. Uh, we are the, the junior member of that partnership. We, we have an economic interest in 27.5% of that going forwards. And the, the um, programme is, is run by the Cancer Research uh, Pioneer Fund. Um, they, uh, uh, some years back now, licensed it, or they, they, they spearheaded the licensing to what became Sierra Oncology. Sierra, of course, last year was acquired by GSK, uh, and it was very clear that uh, GSK only wanted the, uh, uh, the, the late-stage compound that was, in fact, in the NDA process already when, when they acquired. Uh, and I think there were three or possibly four other compounds, all of which got returned to their originating companies, uh, and 737 was one of those. Uh, after a pause, we... Um, uh, CPF managed to do a, a further licensing deal and that is with a, an early stage California based private company. Uh, at this stage we're not able to name them um, uh, and, and uh, we had uh, an initial payment uh, on the, the signing of that deal and there is another one expected uh, either at the, the, the later of 12 months or the launch of a first trial by this company with the drug. Um, we're getting towards that stage now. I, I think from memory that the deal was announced in the first week of January of this year. So the 12 month date will be early January 25. So we shall, we shall see how they're, how they're doing. Fantastic, so um, 2025 is looking to be a, a highly active period ahead for Fasara. I, I certainly hope so. <laughs> Could you um, summarize some of the, the key milestones that investors should watch out for? Well, yes, of course, as I say, there, there, will, be, there will be an announcement uh, regarding 737, I'm quite sure, uh, at the start of the year. Um, we're also, I mean, we, we've already signalled, as I said, that we're going into this, uh, the 1801 long-term tox study. Uh, that, will, that will start as, as soon as we can get everything in place. Um, and that will, the outcome of that study will be known during, during the year. Um, we're also moving 1802, as I say, th further through the, the formal uh, preclinical stages towards the clinic, uh, and I'm sure that there will be announcements coming uh, as, as we go through 2025 in that regard. We are, um, for Sarian uh, at least, well cashed at the moment. Uh, we, in addition to the 3.4 million equity that you referred to, uh, we also enjoyed uh, about one million coming in from the Australian R and D tax credit scheme, so uh, so we have the, the firepower to get through this these immediate stages, uh, and we're very much looking forward to 2025. Fantastic! And that's all we've got time for today. Um, if our viewers would like to learn any more, please visit edisongroup.com. Stephen, thanks very much for joining My us. My pleasure. Today. Thank you. Thank you.